very pleased to have on the line with us Dr. Joe Rahm, founding editor of climateprogress.org, senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, chief science advisor to the Emmy winning, award winning winning that TV series Years of Living Dangerously, the website thinkprogress.org slash climate. And uh, Joe, welcome back to the program. Oh, thanks for having me, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I, I want to get to the story of, so so far, the summer of 2015, which is kind of wrapping up right now. It looks like it's the hottest in, in uh, certainly recorded history, maybe even human history. But first, uh, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts as a climate scientist on the comments of of Pope uh, Pope Francis, well, you know, I think it's just it's very important for for you know important uh, moral voices to speak out that climate inaction is is immoral and and we can't we can't you know just use up the planet's soil and and oceans and climate uh, today and leave leave something ruined for the next you know, 50 generations. So I, I think it's been very important. He, he said some very strong remarks um, at the uh, uh, White House today, and he's speaking in front of Congress tomorrow, and he's expected to, to again, make strong remarks. And everyone should read his encyclical. It's, it's an inspiring document and, and well worth quoting. Yeah, it's astonishing, and it's not. It's it's what about eighty pages? It's not well, one hundred and ninety-five actually. One hundred and ninety-five. Okay. The whole thing, yeah, yeah, and 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 it deals with a lot more than just the climate. But the part about the climate is is pretty pretty startling. Um, the where where are we at in in the in the broad sweep of understanding climate change and understanding how that's affecting um, a our climate and b our weather? Well, I think that. You know, we now understand that the climate is changing uh, due to human emissions of greenhouse gases, and that, you know, the prediction scientists made two or three decades ago, they have come true. And uh, in some cases, things are uh, about what they predicted, and in some cases, things have, you know, are, are worse. And mm-hmm. that should alarm anybody because, uh, you know, the amount of ice that we're seeing melting in both the sea ice in the Arctic and the land-based ice in Greenland and, and Antarctica, you know, pose real dangers to, to humanity. And, you know, it's, it's a wake-up call that, that we need to, you know, start taking strong action to cut carbon pollution. Where, where, how dire is it? It, what you know if james hansen is out there saying if we hit two degrees we're screwed and yet we're almost certainly going to hit two degrees we're eight tenths of a degree in right now which means there's probably at least eight tenths of a degree in the pipeline um and then you've got michael mann saying well you know we've got until the the 2020s anyway uh late 2020s to to absolutely nail this thing down um uh, what's your sense of it well it's you know it is very clear that the two to see two degrees centigrade target scientists don't even like to no longer think of it as a target it is it should be a a warning you know stay away from here right a ceiling uh, and they've been a guardrail and 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 you know i think in the last year and a half what we've seen in terms of the the we're near the point of irreversible collapse in the West Antarctic ice sheet, uh, and so on. That yes, I, I think James Hansen is, is is basically correct. Now it is certainly the case that stabilizing below two degrees centigrade is is rapidly becoming very very hard. Um, you know, uh, but it's only becoming hard uh, politically. You know, the the vast literature on. Do we have the technology, and can we afford to do it? Makes very clear. Yes, we have the technology to start slashing pollution now, and and the cost of the two degree centigrade uh, scenario is is virtually nil. I mean, it's it's you know point zero six percent impact on the annual growth rate, and and that's not even counting all of the co benefits of reducing air pollution or avoiding catastrophic climate change. Well, so, for that matter, the opportunity associated with new technologies. I mean, this, this could be the new dot-com boom. 
Yeah, no, there's no question about it. And certainly the Chinese and the Germans uh, have figured that out and put massive amounts of money to become leaders in, in those sectors. Because we're going to get off of carbon and we're going to go off of fossil fuels. There is no question about that. And, you know, this gets back to the question of is it too late? The, the other way to look at it is um, we will always need to aggressively reduce emissions. It would be smartest to do so now because then we could avoid the very worst impacts. But even in the 2020s, where we're going to be stuck with some very serious impacts, it is still going to be the smartest thing to do to keep warming, let's say, uh, as low as possible below 3 degrees centigrade. Because right. each, each tenth of a degree centigrade you go up, you are worsening the impacts, you are, you are speeding up the feedbacks, and you are rolling the dice. It's, the, it the, seems to me that the, 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 the consequences of global warming are not linear. They're, they may even be logarithmic, you know, sort of the, like the, you know, the way that we listen to sound um, uh, or the, the Richter scale, for example. Uh, well, what, yeah, are, what are your I think thoughts it's, on that? It's like, it's like a snowball that starts at the top of the hill yeah. and, and can turn into a, a, a wildly destructive avalanche if it's allowed to build and build and build. And, and at some point, it is, there's no question, at some point, it is too late to intervene to avoid uh, a catastrophe. But, but, you know, I hate to say it, there are, you know, there are differences, uh, different uh, types of catastrophe. And there's no question that if you get global warming of 4 degrees centigrade, 7 degrees Fahrenheit, you, you have created a, a lot of misery for billions of people probably for the next thousand years. And, and feeding, you know, 9 billion people after the middle of the century is, is going to consume all of human effort. Nothing else is going to matter than trying to avoid mass starvation and, of course, trying to avoid a refugee crisis that would be literally a hundred times worse than the refugee crisis we're witnessing right now. Right, coming out of Syria, which in large part is the consequence of a Syrian drought five years ago where a million and a half farmers had to leave their, their farms that had basically turned into desert. They went into the cities and the Assad government failed to provide any sort of jobs or benefits or anything for them, and that, that led to the, to, the, to the uprising and the civil war. I, I think it's reasonable to call these people climate refugees, and I'm astonished that the press doesn't reference that more often. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, as you know, Years of Living Dangerously, we had a whole segment where Tom Friedman went to, actually went into Syria. He's, he's a wild and crazy guy. Right. And, 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 uh, and it, by the way, the, t, the, the all nine episodes of the TV series are now on Netflix. Oh, great. And great. if you missed it, we just announced uh, last week that we have season two on National Geographic Channel uh, next fall, and we're going to have new celebrity, some of the old celebrity correspondents like Tom Friedman, and some new ones, including David Letterman. Cool. Uh, so it's going to be really. So by exciting. next fall, you mean this fall, right? Uh, no, I mean the. Uh, you mean the, a year from now? No, I mean a year from now. We're okay. we're in production now. I see. And and so this is going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think it's just going to be terrific. But anyway, to get to your point, yes, we um, there's certainly you know. I, we, I try not to use the word cause, because mm. when, when really bad things happen, they usually have multiple causes. Right, it's multi-causal. You know, the, the, the question is, if there had been no... I mean, we're talking about four years of the worst drought in the history of the Mesopotamia region. Right. And it did create conditions that, you know, a brutally incompetent government... Uh, allowed to fester into what, what right. we have now. But hang on, hang on just a second, Joe. Tom yeah. Hartman program. Uh, Joe, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Ah. Uh, Joe Rom, founding editor, climateprogress.org uh, and thinkprogress.org. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Anytime. Good talking.